going on everyone? This is a very important um, working paper out of the Office of Financial Research and th they're involved with Dodd-Frank which is the regulations for Wall Street that were created after the 2008 financial crisis. This is a very important document that I'm going to read the abstract and the introduction to. I'll link the, the working paper into the Discord for everyone who wants to read it, who, that can find it easily and can read it if they want to. Now this is entitled Hedge Funds and Treasury Market Price Impact, Evidence from Direct Exposure. This was published today, and this is relevant because as our group intends, the SPY is going to close at or below slightly 500 by the end of the fiscal year, which is October. And um, there is a slight chance it could be pushed to December. So those two options are open, but we'll have to wait and see. I think by the end of October is where we are going to see it. But Let's go ahead and read this. This is related to the repo and treasuries, which again, money market funds are the primary holders of. And it also talks about compensation for equity markets due to the risk that's taking in from these money market funds like BlackRock, Fidelity, Vanguard, the ones that own majority, if not the entire market many times over. Uh, total between the three big, the, th uh, the big three, Fidelity, BlackRock, and Vanguard, you're looking at a total of around $9 trillion in assets under management, which exceeds the Fed's balance sheet as a whole. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So, the increasing importance of non-bank financial intermediaries, which is money market funds, has raised new questions about the risks that hedge funds pose to the financial system. The Office of Financial Research examined how changes in hedge fund exposures affect U.S. Treasury prices and the yield curve. Using confidential hedge fund data from the SEX Form Private Fund, PF, the OFR, which is the Office of Financial Refer uh, Research, analysts calculated hedge funds' aggregate net treasury exposures and their fluctuations over time. This revealed economically significant and consistent evidence that changes in hedge fund exposures are related to treasury yield changes. Furthermore, particular strategy groups and lower levered hedge funds were seen to have a larger estimate price impact on treasuries. Finally, asset pricing tests show that U.S. Treasury investors demand additional return compensation due to the risks associated with hedge fund demand. Now the abstract of this, financial intermediaries play a key role in the formation of asset prices. More specifically, the increasing importance of non-bank financial intermediaries, again money market funds, has raised new questions about the risks the hedge fund pose to the financial system. We focus on the role that changes in hedge fund exposures play in driving U.S. Treasury prices and the yield curve. Using confidence, oh, this is the same thing. This is the same sentence. Okay, so I'm not going to read that twice. Let's go ahead and dig into the introduction to the paper. Um, again, this was published today. And we're going to read the introduction. So, Financial intermediaries play a sizable role in the macroeconomy, directly affecting firms' leverage and investment behavior, and amplifying economic dynamics across booms and recessions. However, the channels through which intermediaries affect asset prices are less understood. Recent literature on intermediary-based asset pricing discusses the idea that net worth or financial constraints of intermediaries matter in asset classes where such institutions act as marginal agents or agent lending. Risk premia on, on specific assets are determined by the degree to which banks, mutual funds, pension funds, broker dealers, and other non-bank financial intermediaries transact and display demand for them. In this study, we focus our attention on another prominent type of NBFI, which is non-bank financial intermediaries, which are hedge funds and, oh, I'm sorry, it, it focuses their attention on NBFI hedge funds and, and how their demand for safe assets affects the valuation of a central asset in the global marketplace, the U.S. Treasury Securities, which is the central asset and has been since the repo demand surged in early 2021 after the supplemental leverage ratio enacted by the Fed in 2020 expired. Now, as leveraged and well-informed investors, hedge funds impound information into prices through their trades. Smiles! Rendering prices more informative and the market more efficient. 
At the same time, recent events have raised questions about whether hedge funds increase systemic, uh, systemic risk. For example, as the COVID-related financial turbulence hit U.S. markets in March 2020, a flight to quality into the most liquid, safe assets led to Treasury market volatility that widened the Treasury cash future basis. This widening forced several relative value hedge funds to unwind their positions, causing additional market disruptions. The financial press has also suggested that the risk parity and short volatility funds, through their dynamic rebalancing, cut back on their positions in response to market volatility. Such deleveraging may have exacerbated the market turmoil. Now, although there is indirect evidence of selling pressure in the Treasury market during March 2020, evidence on the general relation between hedge fund exposures and Treasury yields using public or commercially available data has been harder to come by because it's all in the one place. In, in this paper, we tackle the issue by directly estimating the price impact of hedge funds and Treasury markets. Using information related to hedge funds direct holdings from the SEC form private fund, we compute in, uh, the total notational exposures, for example, cash bond and derivative positions, or options positions, that hedge funds have to U.S. Treasury markets and their fluctuations over time. Further, we exploit the rich cross-sectional heterogeneity uh, of the data to compare the estimated price impact across funds that implement different types of investment strategies. Based on monthly analysis from 2013 to the fourth quarter of 2020, we find economically significant and robust evidence that changes in hedge fund exposures are related to treasury yield changes. A one standard deviation increase in the net growth of treasury exposures, which translates to a $41 billion monthly increase in hedge fund net exposures, is associated with a 6.2 basis point decline in a five-year bond yield. The size of the estimate is not sensitive to controlling for well-known macroeconomic drivers of the yield curve, such as economic growth and inflation. I'm going to read that one again. The size of the estimate, or of this estimate, is not sensitive to controlling for well-known macroeconomic drivers of the yield curve, such as economic growth and inflation, and exists at various maturities. It is also robust to controlling for the valuation effects of yields on exposures and changes in other financial entities' treasury exposures. Now, moreover, we find differences in the estimated price impacts across funds that trade different strategies and use different amounts of leverage. So the multi-strategy hedge funds are the ones that are going to be primary in this study. At the strategy level, the net exposure changes of managed futures and multi-strategy funds have the most significant price impact, and relative value funds have more negligible impact. Similarly, funds with ex-ante higher balance sheet leverage have the weakest price impact in treasury markets. These results are surprising from the uh, <laughs> canonical risk viewpoint. High leverage levels, all else equal, could lead to a more significant price impact because the positions are larger. Instead, they found the opposite. Now, in this paper's final part, they more directly relate their work to the empirical literature on intermediary-based asset pricing. Using conventional asset pricing methods, we treat hedge fund exposures as a possible risk factor to test whether it is priced in the cross-section of treasury returns. While betas to hedge fund exposures and the associated price of risk are positive, we find that the price of risk, or lambda, is imprecisely estimated, in particular. The statistical and insignificance of the hedge fund lambda is, is likely related to the weak power of the statistical test due to the limited sample size in the time dimension. The inflation lambda suffers from a similar problem unless we extend the sample back to the 1950s. Regardless, the positive lambda associated with hedge fund treasury exposures is consistent with hedge fund treasury demand as a state variable important for pricing treasuries. In the rest of this section, we discuss related research on hedge funds, how our paper builds into that research. They also describe the SEC form PF data, section two. Section three provides regression evidence on hedge fund price impact in the treasury market. Section four examines whether hedge fund treasury exposures are a priced risk factor. And then they summarize this in section five. So we're going to go ahead and go to section five real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Conclusion. To shed light on how hedge funds might affect prices and possibly amplify 
underlying shocks, we estimate the monthly market impact of changes in net hedge fund exposure on U.S. Treasury yields. The association between yields and hedge fund demand is economically and statistically significant and is robust to several potential mitigating factors, including reverse casualty, the activity of other prominent players in Treasury markets, and monetary policy. We also find interesting results in the cross-section when we examine hedge funds by strategy or leverage type. Furthermore, March 2020, when SLR was enacted, which freed up bank capital to uh, continue lending to risky companies, which, uh, and by the way, 2020, which does not display a historically large reduction in net exposures, does seem to serve as an outlier that biases the absolute magnitude of price impact estimates. Overall, these findings indicate that the trading activities of hedge funds can be linked to market price movements. At the same time, it is important to recognize that these findings do not show that hedge funds are the sole or decisive driver of price fluctuations in the treasury market. Neither are they necessarily the source or originator of fundamental shocks that cascade through the financial system. Clearly, there are other forces that drive price movements in the market. Extrapolating from that last point, it might be difficult to demonstrate that hedge fund trading during the March 2020 episode was the principal force behind the large fluctuations in treasury yields and the decrease in liquidity. However, they might have served the role of an amplification mechanism. Yes, because the repo now in 2021 took over. That's why you don't see hedge funds in the repo as players. They're just borrowers. So there you have it. These papers are a fantastic source of uh, education. If you don't understand it, not a big deal. Um, the information is there for you to learn. Take your time. If you do understand it, this is a great paper to look into as far as treasury yields and hedge fund systemic risk.